there's no place I'd rather be. Some people like the beach or the mountains. I'm just as happy. I'd rather be out here with these cattle than I had to be on a golf course or at a Braves game or anywhere. After spending what amounted to a day and a half with them, trust me when I say that Joseph Egloff was put on this earth for one thing, and that's to breed cattle. Originally from Mississippi, he's a man with both a big hat and a big heart. Watching him on the ranch, it's hard to believe that at one point in his life, Joseph actually had a day job in addition to running at the time was a much smaller cattle operation. Still, deep down inside, he always knew being a full-time rancher was his true calling. My daddy um, and my mother went and looked at the farm that was down the road from where we lived. And um, they, it had a little ranch style house on it, with a big front porch. And he told my mother that they were gonna buy it, name it Rockin' Cherry Ranch, and sit on the front porch and watch the kids grow up. And that was in the summer of 71. That October, my daddy passed away. And um, my mother married another horse and cow man. And um, then 45 years later, um, we came up with the idea to have a farm to table um, product. And I didn't want to call it Joseph's Burger or Joseph's Beef. And I asked my mother what she thought about me using Rock and Cherry Ranch and she liked it and so that's that's where it came from. And so here we are today. That one time hobby farm with just eight head of cattle on 25 acres of land, now a massive operation along the country setting of rural Georgia. Joseph says it was a friend who approached him about providing beef for that farm to table operation. From that point on, he knew it was all or nothing. That's when he officially became a full-time rancher. Although he admits there was a learning curve. I thought, well, I can do that. That's, that's simple enough. Didn't realize at the time all you had to do to get your license, your label, find a processor that um, could process to be sold to the public. And we did that. And my original goal was 12 head a year. I thought that's, that's what I could do. And by about year three or four, I was up to nearly 50 head and was renting land everywhere that I could find it and rented this farm here um, and was later able to buy it um, because going farm to table. I could have never done it without doing it any other way. I couldn't, conventionally selling my cattle at the stockyard, I couldn't have done it. Which brings us to yet another leap of faith Joseph took, the USDA certified Mid-South Packers. Located within the Rocking Chair Ranch property, Joseph says his reason for building Mid-South was simple math, really, adding, it certainly wasn't rocket science. No, for Joseph, it was more like rocking chair science. Everybody has to make a living, and when you take your cattle to the stockyard and unload them, there's a half a dozen people who's got to make money off that before it gets to the consumer. Well, if you do all the legwork from your farm to the consumer, you get those rewards also. And um, that's been what I've tried to preach to. And we've probably got about 70 farmers that are coming to Mid-South now that are doing that very same thing. And it's, to be honest with you, it's a really good feeling. We get credit for being an animal welfare approved facility, but we would do the same thing whether we were or not because it's the right thing to do for a bunch of different reasons. If the cattle are not stressed, um, they don't get the adrenaline, you don't have dark cutters, um, and there's, there's no need of, of making it a bad place. And we have a vet that comes every week we have a USDA inspector that's here every day to make sure that we handle cattle properly. Some of these unregulated facilities are just worried about numbers. And yes, we're worried about numbers. We've got payroll to make and got to keep the power bill paid and stuff like that. But um, a lot of what we do, we do because of the animal. Keep the, the animals put here on earth to provide food but that doesn't mean it has to be a miserable life. 
With that said, it's easy to see why the people Joseph comes in contact with describe him as driven, compassionate, protector of the land, and just an overall great person. An example would be his business model. Despite raising grass-fed beef, Joseph says he's an advocate for all practices. Everybody can't eat grass-fed beef. If we tried to feed America on grass-fed beef alone, there's no way that we could feed everybody that, that needs to be fed. We have to have some of these larger commercial facilities. We simply, beef would become so expensive, only the very, very wealthy could afford it. We would like to put a, a um, retail outlet somewhere in town, close to the interstate, that um, could offer a, a butcher shop and have grain-fed, grass-fed, some ready-to-eat products, um, but uh, have a maybe have a little cafe in there. Georgia's got it. Everything you need to have, Georgia grows it, and um, that's that's what I'd like to see in the next five years.